All right, here we go with 174. We're down to the last two. I'm still following the. I'm still following the timeline I was talking about before, which I think this will be the last flashback. No, well, I kind of waffled. I went both ways. Okay, let me re let me reset. They're doing flashback for both, and then we're gonna get a cliffhanger through the filler. Is what I think's happened, but it's equally likely this could be the last flashback in the next episode where we'll resolve everything. Either one's likely, but I'm picking no resolution until after the filler's over. Just because they're dicks. <laughs> Pro probably going to go the other way, but this is what I'm thinking. Like I said, I'm of two minds about it. At any rate, 174, and we're queued up at the very beginning. Three, two, one. Good shit. It's good to be the king. I totally get everything you're saying. This is really cool. <laughs> it's a harsh piece. This is a pretty good rant. Thanos was right. <laughs> I should write, Payne was right on a bathroom wall. That really pisses me off. Wait, shit. That's it? There's no more flashbacks? Shit, that was quick, man. I just, wow, that's really confusing because I thought we were going to I guess I don't, don't know if, uh... Hanbi, whatever, what is it, Hanzo? Is he still alive? Current day? Guess I didn't know that. I'm sure, like I said, like if you watch the series five times, you've got all this shit down. Like, you know, I don't know how it's possible to keep track of all this shit one time through. Especially, you know, talking, right? But even not talking, I don't think I could. But I guess, you know, if he's still alive, then what story is there left to tell? Because I thought what was going to happen was... They were going to show how they got this son of a bitch. Took his ass out. And he built his organization. Maybe they started the Kakashi or Akashi. Really have trouble with that production shit. But um, how he started the organization. How he built it up. I thought we were going to see behind the scenes like the first setup, the first lineup of them. That would have taken a whole episode easy, right? We're skipping. I guess we're not doing all that. The relevant part was, was given, right? You know, so this is what they thought was relevant to the story. So now... Two episodes, okay, so now they're definitely going to wrap this shit up. Right, okay, so you've got this episode and next episode. So this episode will probably wrap this shit up. Next episode will wrap up, you know, going back to the village, maybe starting to rebuild. And then through the filler, they'll be rebuilding. Okay. Wow, I thought we had way more flashbacks. Keep forgetting to talk about this female minion. I have thoughts. Eat my ass. <laughs> I haven't really thought about what his response would be. This is my diary. Oh no, his book. Understanding is only half the battle, though. Yeah. Yeah. 
good. It wouldn't for me either. Yeah. Well, this is anime. Nobody forgives anybody. Yeah. You're not going to let this son bitch go. <laughs> You're out of your effing mind. Now he's gonna try to kill you. <laughs> well, we do have magic. Ninja magic. Yeah, look, you've already given your super villain riff. Yeah. Attack on Titan posits that peace is only temporary. The best you can hope for is a couple of generations. Shit, I think I missed something. Oh, I see. He wrote it about you. His filthy book message. <laughs> Interesting. You're actually going to change his mind? I find that hard to believe. Huh. Give me a rant so I can uh, put it in the book. Tell you want, kid. I see. He wrote that shit down verbatim. That's what you need, first of all. You need that motivation, man. I'm going to rip you off and not give you credit. Yeah, you should have worried. Huh. Fat chance. Damn. That's some toxic masculinity there. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't, sir. He should check in on him. Have... I'm going to leave you to that. Have fun.
actually have of my thoughts on him leaving have evolved. I'll try to remember to talk about that at the end. I'm not sure he could have made a difference by staying, to be honest with you. Because I thought they just turned criminal, like, right after this, right? Him not being around, they, but actually they were trying to do the right thing. They were trying to do good, and tragedy struck. That's what changed him. Him being around, I don't know that would have changed any of that. Oh, so we are going to get more flashbacks. Okay. Did he leave the book behind? Man, we need firewood anyway. This is crap. <laughs> He's just got two paper balls. Oh, shit. I thought they were just going to blow up. This is better. <laughs> Get his ass. Yeah, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> hey, that's another callback. Naruto said the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see about that. I'm going to break the wheel. This is from his novel, right? Yeah. If only. It's starting to hit me in the feels. The weight of all this, right? The parallels between him and Naruto. Maybe it's also the music too, because it's strong. Yeah, I don't see him leaving as a tragedy as I thought it was. I've changed my mind on that. He's realizing it. You're bringing back his, um, his optimism. The fact that his buddy's redhead and, you know... Well, Naruto's not blonde, but you know what I'm saying. The spike, I guess the hair is similar in shape, not color. Yeah, well, you left. <laughs> I'm going to play both sides. I think he's actually having an impact here. I really like how they did all this. The fictional became reality. I like how they tied it all together.
Good shit. Cause I'm awesome. Just cause you changed your bitch ass mind. He hasn't really had great tragedy. He's had some. Actually, he just had some and he over overcame it, so. Cause he just went through it and didn't change it. Yeah. It just happened a couple episodes ago. As I said it, I remembered. Plus here, he had this too, of course. Here? Every time he almost uh, succumbed, he was feeling it. <laughs> Love that design. Oh, yeah, she exists. Damn, dude. I totally get what he's saying. He's equipped to handle it. You're not. Obviously. I'm just going to have to live it. Exactly. I was wondering why they're close up of his foot because he's talking about walking. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> it always is. The parallels are killing me, man. They have the same master. Shut up, minion. Disgusting. Holy shit. I wouldn't trust this.
We're talking about raising the dead? I assume he's going to kill himself somehow. But to what end? Wait, is he going to fix the village? Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> what actual hell? Maybe raise all the people he killed? Maybe he's going to revive all the people he killed. Like, you know, Kaka maybe Kakashi actually was dead. I just didn't believe narratively they were going to kill him. But I guess in reality, he actually was dead. Maybe. Interesting. No, nah, he still had to execute, though. That hack. <laughs> pulp Fiction ass. And I don't mean the movie. I'm talking about the original definition of Pulp Fiction. Well, I don't know what the hell spell he just performed. But, man, this was emotion. This was emotionally uh, a grind. You know, um, what am I trying to say? Ringer. This is an emotional ringer, man. Like, I almost lost it there about 15, 16 minutes into it. If that had been the end of the episode, I probably would have lost it. But then they had more, right? So I kind of was able to gather myself. But my God, it's so emotional. Just the parallels and just the fact they're, they're basically spiritual brothers. And him actually changing his mind is very powerful to me. I just love it. It's such great storytelling. You know, you could possibly bring about real change, but it, it kind of, okay, uh, there's a couple things. Um, one of the things I want to talk about was uh, Attack on Titan. I talked about this. It posited that you can bring about peace, but in most of the last couple generations, which is true. I mean, you know, how long do we have between World War One and World War Two, And have we had peace since World War Two? Not really. On a global scale, yes. But that's kind of what they're talking about here. Like the big countries have peace here in a real world do the small countries not really there's been fighting somewhere you know um Piers anthony one of the worst writers ever did have an interesting idea and he talked about um there was personifications of various things like famine and war and you know time and you know stuff like that right well the the, the personification of war would he's immortal but he only lives as long as there's a war somewhere in the world which there almost always was. But if there was peace across the entire earth all at the same time, he would die. And then the next time a war broke out, a new person would be chosen as a personification of war, and he would live until there was peace all over the world. You know? And so these people live for hundreds of years because there's always war somewhere. I, I like that idea because it's, it feels real. Like there's always a war somewhere. Like, look, we've had a war in Ukraine for over a year now, right? Just That's just one spot. So it's the little countries who are suffering the war now. So that, that's kind of like a real-world parallel he's doing here. If we did achieve peace all over the world right here in our real world, how long would it last? A generation, maybe? Two? Human beings are just not peaceful people. There will be a war about something. Resources these days. Maybe information in the future. Maybe space travel in the future. Who gets the, the best planet to colonize? Like, there's always going to be a reason for war, right? So all you can hope for is achieve peace in your time. World peace forever, I think, is out of reach. And I don't think that's what they're positing here. I think they're talking, he's talking about peace in this time. So, powerful stuff. Another thing I was going to talk about, which, um, you know, I keep talking about how I think it's very possible that Naruto could die at the end of the series. It's a dark ending, but I could see it happen. I see that would be one of the resolutions. But I just realized something in this episode. He talked about he's going to be a Hakage. He said it so many times. That is a goal. 
How do you keep repeating that and keep talking about that throughout the course of the entire series and never have it happen? So, either the series ends with him becoming Hokage, and then I guess he'd be Hokage for the sequel series. But even if the sequel series never existed, this, this series ends with him becoming Hokage. Or, he'll become Hokage in this series for him to die at the end of the series. He, but he has to become Hokage. They've done it too many times. He has to be, at some point, he has to become a Kage. That's just the way this is all set up. You know, he, he's talked about it for too long. So, that changes things in my mind. I'd forgotten about that. I'd forgotten, like, how many, I realized when he said it again, I was like, man, they talk about that a lot. There's no way you get out of this series without him becoming a Kage. So, either that means he's going to survive. It, basically, to me, it probably increases the chance he's going to survive. I was making it 50 50. Now that we got this, we got to factor this in, we're probably talking 20. 2575 in favor of him surviving the series because he's got to become a Kage. Now, you could do the thing like they did in Lost where somebody can become a leader just to achieve something and then die. This is giving me some of that loss, but that means he better become a Kage pretty soon and I don't, you know, they don't seem to be on that track right now. So Nande would have to die. I know you can retire. The third Hokage retired and then the fourth one, but then the third Hokage came back, right? She could retire. I think she'll probably end up dying to let him take place. I don't know. These are my scattered thoughts. I, I, at some point, I'll talk about the female minion, but maybe after the next episode, because this is already too long.